All right, since this is the year-end show, we are not going to do Dude and Dork of the Week. We are going to do Dude and Dork of the Year, the entire calendar year, 2023. The dude should be fairly obvious. He is kind of the Taylor Swift of baseball, and I'm talking about Shohei Otani. I'm not trying to offend any of the Swifties out there. He's, Joey Otani's not Taylor Swift. But in baseball, he is as big a deal as it gets. His year started with what I referred to earlier, his amazing performance in the WBC capped off by a strikeout of Mike Trout in relief for the final out for Team Japan. He then had his brilliant two-way season once more. And actually, it would have been even better had he not suffered an injury that required surgery Regardless, he was still American League MVP. And then to cap it all off, he signs the richest deal in baseball history, $700 million. If you account for the deferrals, it drops to about $460 million, $420 million, $300 however you want to use your interest rates. It's still a great deal. It might not be what some people thought he would get in terms of pure present day value, but you can even say Shohei is a dude for what he did with the structure of the contract, deferring 68 of the $70 million per season. So he could help his team become even stronger. We saw this right away with the signing of Yoshinobu Yamamoto. So Shohei Otani, dude of the year, pretty obvious choice. The dork of the year, also an obvious choice. Now, this cat was dork of the week quite a few times. I kind of lost count after a while. But John Fisher, the owner of the Las Vegas A's, or whatever they're going to be called, he is the dork of the year. And he's the dork of the year for his systematic takedown of that franchise that led to the inevitable decision to depart. And actually, it might not have been inevitable if you listen to people in the Oakland city government. He simply wanted to leave. Now, Obviously, owners do these things. They do things that make us crazy from time to time. But this, to me, was worse. There was a proud history of the A's in Oakland. They had accomplished a lot. They had done some great things. They had become part of the fabric of the community. Now, you might say, well, look at the way they were drawing. They deserve to leave. They should leave. But the way they were drawing was a reflection of the amount of money Fisher was investing in the team. The way the team was torn apart every time it seemed that they were on the verge of something special. If you go back and look at some of the teams, 2019 in that range, Olsen, Chapman, Simeon, you can name a number of great players who got great contracts later. They were all part of the Oakland A's. But John Fisher, well, he's going to Vegas. And here's the other part of the reason he's dork of the year. I am not convinced, nor are a lot of people convinced, that Las Vegas is going to be some kind of salvation for the A's. In fact, there are a lot of questions about whether this team will succeed in Las Vegas, and there are questions about whether even if this team does succeed, will Fisher then invest in the club, or will he continue to carry low payrolls? John Fisher, dork of the year for a variety of reasons. We saw the fan protests this year. They were quite a reflection of the passion of that community, and it's a shame what happened, period. And in my opinion, it could have been avoided had different decisions been made over the course of, I don't know, the past decade or so. This team should be in the Bay Area. It should not be in Las Vegas.